bit like David Attenborough down at the edge of the watering hole in the savannah. Basically what's happened is the father duck with one of the chicks has been separated from his uh, his family and daddy swan has chased them uh, the daddy duck and his little baby away so mummy duck is down here stuck with the last three and just further along the river over there is mummy swan with her little chicks i don't feel like i can let this story go it's like a great big mexican standoff in the local river Oh, Daddy Duck's back. Oh, this is so dramatic. What I definitely don't want is Wilson to get involved. I didn't come prepared for filming a BBC wildlife documentary. I've left my gimbal at home. I've left my microphone at home. Uh, I don't even know if you can hear half of this because of the wind noise. But, you know, this, is, uh, this could be BAFTA winning stuff. Of course, the obvious thing for Daddy Duck and his little boy over there to do would be to just walk or fly, he's got two options, across there without going in the water near the swans to meet up with the rest of his family just down there. Well, it's not rocket science, is it? I suppose, well, he is a duck. Oh my goodness, he's still going. Look, here comes Daddy Duck back in the river. Whilst the little baby, oh my god, Wilson's in the river as well. Oh shit, that's not good. Hold on, I might have to intervene here. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Wilson, come out. Come away. Wilson, out. <laughs> Fucking hell. Because it was the kids' birthday at the weekend, um, we couldn't get their party organised for the weekend, so we had a sleepover for them. Today, though, is their actual party. And imagine my delight when I asked them what kind of party they'd like to have. And they both, both twins, girl and boy, said, we want to go karting. <laughs> it's on. It's happening today. So karting last night was uh, was a lot of fun. Oh. <laughs> Wilson and Pharrell just <laughs> Wilson and Pharrell just seen a rabbit. Got absolutely no chance of catching them, but he'll never give up. Bless him. Um, so last night uh, karting was so much fun. We had twelve eight-year-olds, um, six boys, six girls, uh, karting at an indoor karting place. Um, if you're in the uh, the sort of the Farnborough, the Surrey area. Team sport in Farnborough. I highly recommend it. I didn't even know it was there, but what an amazing place! Multi level karting track, electric carts, uh, seriously quick, differing levels of grip. So, the upstairs level um, you go up a ramp, you go upstairs. The upstairs level has high grip. Downstairs, when you go down the ramp for the second half of the lap, absolutely no grip whatsoever. Um, and that means you can drift the carts around the corners. I mean, just so much fun. Um, the kids had a great time as well, by the way. <laughs> but one of the things that got me thinking was that um, these are electric carts, as I said. Uh, and the electric carts are just the best. So much fun. And a bit like electric cars, you know, I kind of just believe they're better. Their technology's better. They're so simple. They're, they're not too noisy. There's no fumes inside the place. And the acceleration is just mind-blowing. Um, the power over grip levels is just, uh, you know, so, so much that you can have incredible amounts of fun. You can go incredibly quickly. Um, and I kind of thought, I think I mentioned this the other day on a, a video, the Q&A video, because somebody asked a question about it. But um, it really made me think that we should be using electric cars to build some kind of, of ladder towards the likes of Formula E. Um, so to build some kind of academy. Um, I know that there's this new Tesla-based uh, electric championship that's been kind of bubbling away in the background for quite a few years now. Not sure if it's ever going to actually happen, but they have announced a kind of electric karting academy. And it feels like we should be definitely doing something like that for Formula E. If, uh, if Formula E is going to be the pinnacle of, of its own type of motorsport, um, you know, in terms of electric single-seater racing, and if we want youngsters to aspire to grow up through their careers and aspire to be, um, I'm covered in 
<laughs> covered in cobwebs. If you want youngsters to aspire to be uh, Formula E drivers, kind of when they grow up, like kids have always aspired to be Formula One drivers, which I can see happening at some point. Um, we need to build them some kind of ladder of progression to head towards that. So why not um, give them some kind of, of, of academy or some kind of education from this early age as to what's involved in electric vehicles and electric racing? Um, because I kind of, I can foresee, and this is today's question for today's video for you guys really, uh, I can foresee a future where, well in fact this is a, a, an interesting question because I can't foresee it, I don't quite know what the answer is, but people often say to me, um, will Formula E end up overtaking Formula One as the pinnacle of, of motorsport? And it's quite an interesting one, I don't think it will, uh, I think Certainly in the short to medium term, there's absolutely room for both to coexist at the top of their own individual sort of pillars of motorsport, if you like. But what about 20 years from now, 30 years from now, when, you know, burning fossil fuels becomes so socially unacceptable, let alone illegal. Um, and certainly with the younger generation, if young kids are growing up watching people burning fossil fuels in cars, emitting gases into the atmosphere that we know are killing the planet, they're going to look at that thinking, what on earth are you doing? They're going to turn their noses up at that. Surely they're going to be thinking, why are, why are these adults killing our planet knowing that's what it does? It's a little bit like kids looking at adult smoking now. You know, it's become so socially unacceptable that youngsters look at them and think, why on earth are you doing that? You know that's going to kill you, and yet you're still doing it. So if that happens, if we fast forward to a time when that happens, what happens to motorsport? Does um, Formula E take over? Do Formula One and Formula E end up converging or merging together? Does one take over the other? Does uh, Formula One, um, you know, utilise its enormous fan platform and... Uh, and merge it with Formula E to, to create the most spectacular electrified racing on the planet in this, on this huge global platform that it has? Um, or does Formula One, is Formula One forced to sort of increase the electrification side of what they do and, uh, and go fully electric at some point? Don't know the answer to any of those, but it's almost guaranteed that at somewhere down the line, electrification is gonna play an even bigger part in motorsport than it does now. So, if and more likely when that happens, what does the future of motorsport look like? Um, does it look like uh, anything we can comprehend right now? Does it look like open wheeled racing? Um, is it more a production car based motorsport that's at the pinnacle, at the very top of the tree? Is it, uh, is it open wheeled? Is it closed wheeled? Open cockpit? Closed cockpit? Single seater or not? I don't know. And that, I guess, is my question to you. What do you think the future, and I'm talking 20 years away, what do you think the future of motorsport will look like? Will it have drivers in the cars? Will it be fully electric? Will there be some other means of propulsion by that point? And what on earth will the cars look like? Will we still love it like we love it today? Will we still complain about it the way we complain about it today? And who will the stars of that sport be? Will they be the kids who are starting off in electric karting right now, today? Or could it be something completely different? Take the robo race model. Could it be that the stars of our sport in the future might actually be as much data scientists creating the algorithms for driverless cars as it is the drivers in our sport today? I mean, personally, I can't see that as being uh, having quite the appeal to fans as... as the human driver behind the wheel, but who knows? 20, 30 years away, what will the future of top level motorsport look like? And will we still love it? Quite intrigued to know the conclusion of uh, Duck Swan Gate. I'll let you know when I find out.